Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here for my weekly update. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who wished me a happy birthday. Um, this past week was my birthday, and I had a really nice week. There was a few different, op um, few different occasions for receiving gifts and having someone else make dinner <laughs> and stitching extra, so that was all very lovely. Um, I wanted to show some birthday um, presents right off the bat um, that I got this week because there were a lot of them that were stitching related. Um, not every year do I get this many stitching gifts, but I think because of floss tube, I had a lot more like new designers that I'd never tried before that I was able to put on my wish list. So I had a lot of new things on my wish list and ended up getting quite a few of them. <laughs> so not only was it a stitching birthday, but it was had a lot of new... I think almost everything I got was something that was new to me as far as like a designer or something I hadn't done before. So that's really exciting. The first one, I guess I should do this one. This one's not technically birthday, but it came... Um, like I said before, I got mail the afternoon after I uploaded my video, yet again, <laughs> I got two packages. And so the first one was technically not for my birthday. It was from Floss Tuber Cross Stitch Button. And she decided, instead of giveaways occasionally, she would just pick people um, here and there to send a gift to. So that was really generous and unexpected so she had asked me for my address so I knew it was coming but I had no idea what she was sending and how much she was sending so this was really special um let's see all of it was kind of needlework related um in lots of patterns this first one is a French book and this cover kind of represents what's inside. There's lots of stitching, sewing related patterns in here and I don't um, I don't speak French so there might be some translation necessary if I want to read the articles about the patterns but the the actual patterns in the back are just symbols and DMC colors so that's universal. You don't need to know the language for that. So this one on the cover is really pretty. I like that one. There's this like uh, sewing sampler that's really pretty. There's a lot of lot of pretty things in here. Um, some little things. This one was kind of cute. There's a little kitty with a ball of yarn or like a little ornament. <laughs> like, hmm, might need to do that for my mother. Um, lots and lots of things. I won't do a whole flip through, but, um, yeah, here's that one that was on the cover, I think. That one's really pretty. I like, I like the colors in that, and the colors on the dress form are really pretty. Here's a sewing machine sampler. Mamula stitches like those machines. I thought of her. There's this other one that has a machine on it. And... Oh, this one was cute because it's a mom helping hem a little girl on her dress, which I have a little girl, and I'm going to be making her a dress somewhat soon. Not sure when, but... So there was just a lot of cute things. Here's some more little girls. And there's... A lot of these are small. Like, you could take little bits of it and um, add it together, you know, to do something else. So that was really fun really lots of fun colorful patterns and I guess let's keep this all together here the other one is so I don't have anything by this designer which is in French so I'm not sure I'm not sure Veronica probably and this is my first soda stitch that she gave me which has this really cute seamstress working on her embroidery and I really like this pink version 
Um, I have a lot of 28 count rows. Well, not a lot. I bought a yard of 28 count rose Monaco last year and used a lot of it for my heaven and earth design patterns. But especially the piece that I cropped, um, a stitching stitchers retreat, I cropped it down. I've got, so I've got a chunk of that left. I might have to do that. Oh, I guess that's the little version. I, I think I like the whole circle rather than they have a little version too. Oh no, that is a circle. It's just hard to see in the camera. They have a small version. Here's a small version. And one that says Mercy. So that's really cute. I've never had a soda stitch before. And the other one is By the Bay. I'm a needlesmith. And I saw somebody else show this the other day. Um, so I think it's been around a while. I've never, I might have, might have seen this before. She's got a spinning wheel and some sheep and knitting in the back and some sewing things up here. My husband actually saw this and he was like, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> so he actually liked this one. Um, so that's a really cute one. I haven't ever done a by the bay thing before. And then in addition to three pattern, well, one's a book, so there's lots in there, but she gave me a, I believe this is a fat half of Jobulin fabric, which is, and 28 count, so lots of possibilities. <laughs> I can do um, way too many full coverage pieces on here, which I already have a lot started, or I could just stitch, you know, two over two, um, maybe even this on, you know, there's lots of possibilities there. So thank you so much, um, Maureen. That was very generous and very special. And I, it just happened to fall on my birthday week. So that was kind of a bonus birthday present. The first one that was actually a birthday present came from Ann P in the mail, um, same day as that one right after I filmed my last video. And she sent this specifically for my birthday. And you know how much she likes, if you watch her, you know how much she likes color and cotton floss. So guess what she gifted me? And I have never used or touched color and cotton floss. So now I have, I think there were 13 of them in here. Here's the first little chunk of colors. Aren't they so pretty? There's hot pink, maraschino, rust orange, low flame, antique gold, earth day, and eat your greens. <laughs> so those are the first few there. Gorgeous colors, and here's a few more. Woohoo! Look at that. And there's Mermaid's Dream, Big Blue, Black Current, which is the one Anne used on her summer solstice one. Gorgeous color. Quarter Horse, look at that. Flagstone, and Lullaby. Look at all of these. Gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I am very excited to, there, I think I can get them all together. <laughs> I'm very excited to use these. Um, so thank you, Anne. And I think she picked out several and Angela from Color and Cotton threw in a few extras just to say happy birthday from her too. So thank you, ladies. And a lot of my um, patterns are, set colors and I don't do a lot of primitive to, to like sub out colors so I never wasn't quite sure originally what I would do with like a floss club or something but um, now that I have these it's got good timing because I was planning to do a a stitch for my pre daughter's preschool teacher my older son had her too um, I don't know how long ago six years ago, I guess. And 
she's an amazing teacher and this will be my last kid ha able to have her. So I figured for Teacher Appreciation Week, which is in April, I'd like to stitch her a present. And D Stitcher worked on one for her daughter's preschool teacher last year and I'll show a picture of it here. And that one, I'm not fond of the color choices they made, um, but I like the sentiment. So this will be perfect to change colors. And I also have a few of the Gentle Arts threads from my Joyful World pieces that I can choose from as well. But I thought this would be fun. And this black currant, that's going in the butterfly for sure because my daughter loves purple. So I need to have purple in in there somewhere. So I'm excited to use those on that. And I have, later on, I have another one that I might um, draw from for this. So this is a fun resource. Thank you, Anne. I'm really excited to use those. And then real life people gave me, my mother-in-law got a whole bunch of things from 123 Stitch that were on my wish list. And so that's like amazing. <laughs> really fun present. So let's see. First up, she got me the Twisted Band Sampler. This is the specialty stitch version. And she got me the fabric to go with it. This is Bisque, the recommended fabric. So it's like a light, creamy color. It doesn't look like there's a lot of modeling, um, but it's a nice color. And there's, I think it's a Lakeside Linens. So this is technically ready to go. It calls for um, a Vera so, so I don't know how to say that. Swa, a Vera Swa, silks or dinky dyes silks or DMC. And it's got the conversions for all three of them there on the back. Um, I will probably use DMC for this and I'm okay with that. However, I might change the color palette so it's not a rainbow. I, I like rainbow colors, but I'm curious of what it would look like if I don't know. I might just leave it. I might change it to be a more like more all cool colors, pinks, burgundies, blues, purples. Not necessarily the greens and yellows and oranges, but who knows? I may just leave it the way it is. I'll pull all the colors and see what I think and then see if I want to change it out. But this stitching Stitch Mania has their um what do you call it? Designer of the month in December is Northern Expressions Needleworks, so I will be probably starting this in December of this year. Because I can. <laughs> and it's pretty, so why not? They also got me my first, this is my first Northern Expressions Needleworks pattern, and this is my first Nora Corbett. And it's um, the letter S for Sarah. Letters from Nora. And this one calls for all crescent colors flosses. And I don't know if it's really necessary. It seems like every, like, seems like a lot of the time it's, it, there's small chunks of the color. So I'm tempted just to try my hand at converting this to DMC. Um, it's a small design, so I don't really feel like I want to spend the money on a whole bunch of specialty threads for it. So if anybody has converted this pattern or any of these letters or any crescent colors to DMC and knows like a resource online for a conversion, I'll probably Google it. But if somebody knows and save me a step, that would be fantastic because I'll probably convert that to DMC. Um, and if you've stitched this and there's a color that you think is vital, then maybe I'll get like one or two, you know, really key colors and the rest could be DMC. She, oh, I forgot to bring that. This, um, my mother-in-law also got me this 
40 count patina from Lakeside Linens. And this is enough to do Little Wings from L Lavender and Lace, which I forgot to bring out here. Um, I'll probably insert a picture to remind you what it looked like, but I have the pattern and that was one that doesn't have any beads, so it would be perfect on a smaller count fabric to try 40 count, and I ended up going with 45 count for Enchanted Alphabet, but this was still on my wish list, and so now I have 40 count for Little Wings as well. So I might do a conversion of her and make her dress like burgundy or something instead of dark green, and the little girl can still be her normal white and blue, but I might pick up the colors from the, I think there's flowers around that birdhouse. I might pick up some of those colors and the flowers and make her dress that color. So we'll see. But I'm not super crazy about the dark green dress, but there's that fabric. So I can make, I can work on that design whenever I feel like it. Oh, and she also got me all of the beads and treasures and Krennic for, not that one, <laughs> for this one. So I have all of these. So if I convert this to DMC, I could start this whenever I wanted to, because she gave me all of these cutesy things too, all the beads. So fun. So that was wonderful from my mother-in-law. And one more set of presents to show you. I don't have a lot of whips today, so that part of the of the film of the video won't take that long. But my husband got me Heirloom Nativity Sampler by Victoria Samplers. And this is really fun. I love the specialty stitches and just I love Christmas nativity stuff. I'm stitching the Heaven and Earth Nativity. I have a nativity advent calendar that I've already finished. Um, so when I saw this, I needed to do it. I saw it on um, Little Yellow House Crafts. Now, she was working on it. I don't I don't think she's finished hers, but she was working on it, and I saw it there. That was one of those pause the video, I must put this on my wish list kind of moments. Um, and then Goldfishy has finished it, and she shared her up close, you know, row by row of her finish which helped me um, be convinced that I don't need to kit this up with all the silks. They have um, MPI silks, Krennic Mori, and all, a lot of those. For, for all of these that are just plain, probably solid color silks. Not gonna do that. They don't also don't have a DMC conversion in here, so if anybody has converted one of these patterns to DMC and knows there's a more um, a Vera Swa in here too. So if conversions for those colors for MPIs for Krennic Moris, I'll do those in DMC. There is this one that's highly variegated. That's a Gloriana. And there's some green bands here that are also, there's another, two Glorianas and a Gentle Arts. Um, that one's a brown one. I don't know where that one's found. But there's some multicolored ones that I'll probably buy. So there's like three maybe that I'll buy plus the beads and stuff. So, um, and then the rest I'll do DMC. So this I have the fabric for. Um silver, the same color I'm doing my Nantucket Rose on. I have a strip of that left over from another project. So I'm like, perfect, I have it already. This I will probably start next month so I can be working on it a little bit this winter um, in preparation for Christmas. So I'm excited about that. Pardon the garbage truck outside, <laughs> if you can hear that. And then the, the only thing I got that I, besides like the Mill Hill beads, the only thing I got that I had not had before, like all those other designers I've never had before, I got another Mirabilia, which I have Mirabilias before, but not this one, clearly. I got Stargazer. These last two 
were from my husband. So Stargazer is another one that I think I might want to convert in colors because I like the thought of having her on a darker night sky fabric, like dark blue or dark gray. I've seen somebody do dark purple. I think Anne was doing dark purple. Um, but the way her dress is charted, I think would blend in too much or just be way too much blue. So I'm not sure what colors I want to change her to. I've seen, I mean, Jessie Marie is changing her to maroons and golds, or maroon and orange, sorry, maroon and orange, I think, for her uh, memorial piece. And I've heard somebody else said there was like a green, green and gold or something conversion. I'm, those aren't necessarily my colors. Um, and just doing a rough Google search doesn't necessarily result in a whole bunch of if somebody knows a place that has a lot of Mirabilia conversions that I could go and Google and figure out what I want to do, that would be another helpful tip. If there's a Facebook group or something where there's conversions, that would be nice to know so I can maybe pick something. Don't have to reinvent the wheel if someone has already done one that I like. That's all. So many fun things. I'm really, really, really excited. So thank you everybody who... Um, Ann and Angela and Cross Stitch Button, Maureen, let's see, as well as the people in real life. But yeah, thank you for everybody who stitched along with me on my Chatelaine too. That was really fun to see everybody's progress on Instagram. And um, so, what I was working on this week. I finished October. Here's where it was last time. Feels like an eternity since I worked on this, but here it is now. All done. And I'm still not sure. Looking at it now, it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't look that bad. This, this bright color seems a little bit overwhelming. It's supposed to be Gentle Arts Claret, and I don't have that color because this is the only place it was used. And I just went with the DMC conversion, which is really, really dark compared to their <clears throat> example. It looks a lot different than their example. And normally that wouldn't necessarily bother me. There's been other colors that look different than the example, but I don't know. It's still, I don't want it to be distracting from the cute little critters. So my thought is I might leave it up in my frame at the beginning of October and see if it bugs me. I don't know. I'm considering maybe Ruby Slipper, which is another color that's been used in the Joyful World series, not in this one. But having that um, instead of this one. So... If I know that on Instagram a lot of people were, oh I love it, it's great, love the contrast, but I'm the one who has to look at it, so I might look at it up in the frame for a while and see if it really grates on me. Or maybe I'll take like one flower out and redo it in this and just kind of see if it's worth taking all of it out. So we'll see. Finished, but maybe not finished. <laughs> um, and it feels weird to not work on that every weekend because this is the first month I just kind of busted it out and now it's done. So that's kind of strange, but not bad. Next, I started my Chatelaine and I was planning to work on this for three days and I didn't want to stop. So after three days, I had, I think, this top little bit done. But then I wanted to get into this part, so I kept going. <laughs> and my waterfall piece that I've been trying to work on has, because we had a place in the home for it, my, my husband's, we've been talking about reorganizing that TV room where it would go and maybe mount the TV on the wall in the location where the waterfalls was going to go. If that happens, I don't I don't need to be pushing to finish waterfalls. And 
At best, it probably would have taken at least two years to finish anyways. So I'm not going to bend over backwards to finish that. I will work, fit it in where the full coverage themes are next year and work on it a few times. I will pick other pieces for my 1200 stitches per month challenge that they have over there. I was going to do that one every month for the 1200 stitches. <laughs> Big, wow. <laughs> Big rays of light all of a sudden. It's been raining today, so maybe that's some sunshine. My goodness. What in the world? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Here, let's go over here. I'll just hold you for a minute. Um, yeah, so I'm, let's see, what was I talking about? Waterfall. I'll, I'll probably pick full coverage pieces that are closer to finishing, like my Knitting Woman piece that I was going to do for my, mo my mom, work on that one for the 1200 stitch challenge instead and maybe get some finishes or work on, yeah, some of my other small ones and maybe hope to get some of those finished. Instead of, it's gonna be, it's gonna be annoying. Instead of um, waterfalls. So waterfalls will only get seen if, every once in a while like some of my other pieces. I like it, but it's not one of my favorites. So it's, um, sorry about that. I don't want you to fall on the floor either. <laughs> Anyways, the sun finally came out. Anyways, instead of waterfalls in the coming months, I think I'll fit this one in and I'll fit in like the nativity one. There'll be other things that will take its place because I, I want to keep working on this. So I was not prepared for how much the sun went back behind the clouds and center you again. I was not prepared for how pretty this would be. And because I didn't realize how many beads there were in this piece. Um, but there's a lot. Because when you look at this front page, you really can't tell what's going on. So I just thought that front, that I thought this top border was all stitches but it's mostly beads so this is where my chatelaine is now after about five days so super excited all those beads on top beading and specialty stitches as I go I got this top part um, beaded all around and there's these little road stitches in between. The outside thread is um, yeah. forest, it's a Gloriana. I'm trying to get it where you can see it without too much brightness there. That's pretty good. Um, I got one of the, there you can see that on the tree, the variegated of this color. This is forest also. This sky is single strand half stitches in Dane Tree. That's the dinky dies I had. And these stars and this, um, these icicles and all, of, there's an inside border here that's that sparkly silk lame braid. And lots of beads. These beads are matte. These like light teal ones, they're they're matte, they're not sparkly, which was kind of interesting. Man, this sun. I thought it would be really good today. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's been fun. I finished the top. I decided to go, I was considering for a long time, it says my garden is my winter wonderland, which for me is not an accurate, um, this uh, accurate title. Um, my, my garden will never look like this. So I was thinking dreaming of a winter wonderland conveyed my feel about the, the winter scenes in here. But I also kind of had a, an interest in finding a Bible verse because that's meaningful to me. 
So I ended up finding this one. I found several, but they, some of them didn't really fit the feel of the piece and some of them were just too long. This one fit the space and kind of fit the feel of the piece. It says, he gives snow like wool. Psalm 147, 16. And the second half of this verse says, and he scatters frost like ashes, which could have also fit the piece, but was too long. So I just stuck with the first half of the verse and it kind of gives like the sense of cozy provision with, you know, the snow covered landscape. So I liked that. So that's where that is. I have one more day today to, to work on it. So I'm hoping to get more done on this, these trees. There's going to be a star here. There'll be more bicombs here and on the tops of these two trees here. There's like a, a frame for the year right here. And I think I'm going to put 2017 in there because even though if I may not finish it in 2017, this is the year of my first Chatelaine. So I'm going to keep it 2017. And so next time I'll show this again because I will have, you know, a, a touch more work on it. And this is light blue, pretty light blue fabric. Um, you can kind of see it right there. It's unfortunately not photographing very well. So when I share on Instagram, it doesn't look quite as nice, but it's really a nice wintry blue, like a sky blue. And it's been really, really pretty to work on. So. There's that one, and I will work on that a little bit more today. And then tomorrow I will start back on my love letter, which I showed last week. Didn't get it out yet because I just didn't want to stop working on <laughs> my Chatelaine, which I'm sure anybody who's actually done one would might understand. And this one is small, so it doesn't seem as overwhelming as some of the other ones I've seen. And I know some people including myself, are a little intimidated by um, shadow lanes. Sorry, I was hoping it was gone. It's not. A little awkward angle today. Um, but it's been really fun. And every time you, like especially around that border, you add a new color, a new, a new color of bead, a new color of thread, a new outline, like it just adds layer upon layer of color and texture and it just ends up being this masterpiece and mine isn't even a, as complicated and, and spectacular as some of them are. So I would just encourage you to try it if you have one and you have been scared of it. Find the part where you're going to start and kind of just examine it but first before you get started and read the notes that she includes and if you need to watch some tutorials on specialty stitches if but she has little diagrams in there which with numbers of where to go um, so just to try it just to start with a little section and before you know it it'll just grow and you'll keep going and have a blast <laughs> so I'm encouraging you guys if you've been on the fence about starting one, I've heard a couple people say, oh, I'm not sure. I have one, but I don't know. I'm not ready. So just try it. Nothing, nothing no harm in trying it. Um, let's see. I did not do my temperature garden this week because I was working on that and didn't want to stop. So I, sh I can do two flowers now. So sometime this week I'll get, I'll get caught up and do a couple more flowers on that. It was actually raining this morning while I was getting ready, and I love that sound. I wanted to share Lisa stitching and such. She had a lot of rain in her last video and um, was hoping it wasn't too loud uh, over over her talking. But I just love that sound. Like it was enjoyable to listen to in her video. It's enjoyable to listen to when it rains here. I grew up in Oregon, so. The sound of rain is like this cozy, homey feel. And we don't get it that often here, so when it does happen, it's like, oh, I love it. It's so go it's so great. It's so yeah, cozy and homey. Anyways, so I love the sound of the rain. And let's see. Plans for this coming week. One more day on my shadow lane. I think I'm gonna do instead of waterfalls, I'm gonna do 
I was going to do four days on my love letter. I was going to do five on waterfalls, but I'll do four days on my love letter so that I can start the National Park Greetings from the Parks Sal um, earlier than I had been planning and give that one four days as well. Um, that's the new Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery um, Stitch Along. I have some beige 18 count Ada I'll be working on. It's like a dark tan color and should be able to show off the white pretty well on there. And I will start that on the 16th. If I get to a good stopping point on the love letter on the 15th, um, I might start the National Parks the afternoon of the 15th because it's um, the clue comes out at noon and it's the same time zone as I am so it comes out at noon my time and I may not be able to resist starting it at 12.01 so <laughs> actually no that's not true I have to pick up my kids at half day so I won't be able to start it until like 12.45 but if if I get to a good stopping point on love the love letter and um am able to start national parks early I may but at this point I'll start it on the 16th um and give love letter four days and greetings from the parks four days and then that's all I'll work on until I see you again I am working on my secret stitch in the car it's coming along slowly but surely and I might take a picture once a week on that one just so I can give you a little like you know flip through the pictures when it's done to see the progress if you guys think that might be an interesting thing to see um, let me know if you like that idea I can take some progress pictures and share them all at the end um, oh yeah and going forward I wanted to share what I some ideas I had for using my 40 count gauze that Shelly key X stitch had given me one of them is a little little more um, square sized one and I found this free pattern from DMC it's got a lot of white space but there was somebody I think it was just a comment on here that was saying that they have a friend who does 40 count gauze everything does Satsuma Street patterns and various things on 40 count gauze with white space and and it's fine so I thought I'd try this with some white space and this is the one I might use some color and cotton floss for because I don't necessarily love the color choices they have to see what a 40 count gauze with white space would look like I'll do the, that one for the little one possibly and for the bigger one I have a little bit bigger rectangle the stitching if I have a one inch margin it's got like a stitching stitch area of four by three I think and I, there's a quick stitch, Anne of Green Gables, Heaven and Earth Design pattern on their website that I've seen before, but I never really was drawn to because there's so much background. Like there's this huge tree and the house and Anne, of, Anne and Gilbert are itty bitty. And so I've never really been interested in that pattern except now. And I realized I was curious how big that little section of just Ann and Gilbert, how big would that be and would that fit on my 40 count gauze? I didn't want to buy the pattern and have it not work out, not fit. So I was hesitating. And then on Instagram, Handmade, Hannah with Handmade, she has created a cropping tool free for use on her website and I will link that below. It's, it's live that you can use it now and um, where you can <clears throat> upload a picture of your design, input the stitch count of that design, and then use her cropping tool to just center the area that you are planning to stitch and it'll give you the dimensions of your cropped area. So that was perfect for my problem because then I could figure out if Ann and Gilbert would fit what their stitch count would be and if it would fit on my little 40 count scrap that I have and guess what it fits <laughs> it would fit so perfectly on my little 
thing. So I will be doing that, and I think that will probably be be my May start for full coverage fanatics um, for Stitch Mania in May. And they've Heaven and Earth has had forty five percent off sale after I cropped it with her cropper online, just a picture and. Um, I went over to their website and realized it's 45% off right now. It actually made it in like step two of the shopping cart. I was about to click purchase. I'm like, wait, hold on. I just got a bunch of birthday presents. I don't need to buy anything more right now. I'm not planning to start it until May. So I restrained myself mainly so I wouldn't have to justify another pattern purchase to my husband right after I received so many lovely patterns. So I'm going to wait in for another sale closer to May. And I know there's every once in a while it'll come around. It's still several months away. And um, I do want to wait for a sale, especially because I'm only stitching this much of it. So I don't want to pay full price if I'm only going to stitch this much. So that's happening next year. <laughs> so that will be full coverage, but it's going to be a cute little one. So... I forgot to check what the actual stitch count would be, but um, to share with you, I could calculate it real quick, but I've already been waxing eloquent a little bit. So anyways, it, it'll be about four by three when um, it's finished on 40 count, one over one half stitch. That should be fun. Um, and I think that's it. So I will keep stitching and I hope you do too and enjoy your stitching progress uh, this week and have a lovely week. Happy stitching!